Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line, he is an Emmy Award-winning comedian seen on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. He's got an HBO and Comedy Central special, plus a very own podcast called Inside with Paul Mercurio. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Mercurio is on the line with me right now. And Just a little bit of history. Uh, Paul, we first met uh, back when I was doing the morning show with Moose and Amy uh, a lot of years ago. Paul, how you been, bud? Yeah, it's great to be back. It's been uh, since 2020, since I've been on with you. I, COVID happened and everything else. And, and plus, you you know, you, you were kind of annoying, so I was avoiding you for a while. And then you're like, please call back. I'm like, all right. And what was funny about it the other day, you called the cell and I added you in. Know, I'm like, huh, I've got Paul Mercurio's number on my phone now. That's pretty rad. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I keep getting these calls? Like, what are you doing? Where? What? Well, Wow. Hi, Paul. Very, very raspy and a lot of d*** pics. Right. And then I'm like, b socks. I know it's you. Will you stop? And you're like, damn, how did you know it was me? I know, right? Well, hey, yeah, it's been a while since we talked. been a while since you've been in town. Yeah. Uh, 2020, mm. that was the last time you were here, right? If I remember yeah, correctly? Yeah, January 2020, and things were getting crazy with COVID. Okay. And then, uh, and then I bounced over to Omaha, and it was in March, and that, it was that weekend when every, the entire world shut down. And I remember calling my wife going, I don't think there are going to be any shows. And people came out, and they're like, screw it. This is our last chance to get out. Like, the shows were back. <laughs> So, you know, the NHL closed, the NBA, everything closed. And then a few months later, I got it. I got COVID in June of 2020 at a different comedy club where they weren't having people wear masks. And, oh, man, it just kicked my ass. Just crazy. Yeah. Did you get it? uh, Was it like the really bad version of it or was it like the head cold version of it? I know this isn't the funny part of the interview, but now I'm curious. I had like a I had no. I had a, like a little little cough. I went. I got tested. I, it was long hauler stuff that's been bothering me. You know, like mm-hmm. um, I'm really annoying. But my wife was like, well, "You've always been annoying, so it's not a COVID related issue." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm not lying. My dog finds me annoying. I got I got to tell you this because, like, no, this dog, which we saved in a pound, saved her life. <laughs> saved me. It's not the center of my wife's. Yeah, you laugh. First of all, the dog has a weak sphincter. So she has oh, to have no. a pill twice a day because she gets a little tense. Like you can't like scream or raise your voice around it because there'll be little squirting will happen. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I'm Italian, so I'm yelling all the time, right? And you come into my house and it looks like an assisted living facility. There are wee pads everywhere. <laughs> everywhere you turn, there's just <laughs> wee pads and it smells like desitin and Bengay. That's the whole thing, right? So, so whenever I walk into a room, my dog gets up and immediately walks into another room. Like, like with this yeah. look on her face, like, oh, this a-hole again. And she walks into the other room. And my, and my wife is like, well, she finds your voice annoying. I'm like, well, what do I, am I, do I sound like a vacuum cleaner to her? What are you talking about? I'm annoying. So your so wife's like, a dog whisperer. Thing. Oh my God. She's just, oh, Daisy this and Daisy that. And I keep letting the dog out and the dog keeps coming back. I don't know why I can't seem to make it work where the dog just runs away. And, well, no, I'm just kidding. But I, <laughs> my wife would kill me if I did that. But, oh, um, but yeah, so I had this COVID thing and then the long hauler stuff is what got me, you know, really like, uh, tired, tired, really tired for a long time, all the time, and inflammation of my joints and Ugh. not having sex with my wife. Wait, again, that's not COVID related. I keep getting those two things confused. Uh, I but I tell say, you though, the, I got, I've had COVID yeah. for a while then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, you better but go I'll see beep. a doctor. <laughs> um, you know, it's weird. The thing that happens is, and anybody listening who's had it, it's the only time in modern medicine when you go to the doctor and they can't really give you something to fix your problem because they didn't know that at the time, especially knew nothing about it. It wasn't their fault. And you'd go in and they, like, I remember the day I went in to see my doctor, my COVID doctor in New York, where we live. And she had a clipboard and she goes, okay, well, what are your symptoms? I'm like, well, I'm tired all the time. Yes, we've heard that. She checks that off, but I lost my sense of taste and smell. Yes, we heard that. I had inflammation. I have random shooting pains. Yes, we heard that. And at that point, anything was plausible. So you could say anything like every Tuesday frogs crawl out of my ass. Yes, yes, we heard that. Um, uh, what, are they red frogs or green frog? Like, it was, it was if it's like, blue, don't it's worry bad. about it. <laughs> If it's blue, you're fine. It's just, it's just Benny the blue frog. We love him. He's adorable. And um, and then, you know, everything shut down. And, you know, the city, New York, just completely shut down. And it was like a ghost town. And it it's funny. You don't realize how much you like the noise until yeah. you miss it and it's gone. And then you're like, 
I don't like this. It's creeping me out. And I want noise again because the noise will tell me that things are normal again. So just so I could feel like things were normal in the middle, the dead middle of COVID, and everything shut down, I would just, I went out and I rented a jackhammer and I would just jackhammer around New York City for no reason at all. Just like, <laughs> just wherever I could. <laughs> just, just, just like yeah. outside people's apartment window at like six in the morning for no reason. <laughs> just so I could feel normal again. Just randomly scream at people for no reason. Oh my God, totally, totally. And then, I don't know about you, but like, I started doing work around my house and I got so into it. Like I was ordering stuff online, but this is how bored I got. And this is when I realized I got to get out of the house and things got to get back to normal because I needed a set of like stainless steel screws for something. And I ordered it on Amazon and then I started tracking the screws on Amazon, the (laughs) shipment to see when they were coming. (laughs) What were were you working on? I was, I was putting in a new, we were putting in some new walls and I put in a cabinet and I needed screws and the, and and I was like a 95 year old man going St. Louis. What are my screws doing in St. Louis? This is crazy. (laughs) Everybody either became a TikToker, a carpenter or a chef during COVID. Yes. That's so true. Those are the three things. You're right. I, and, uh, I tried TikTok, but whenever I tried dancing, I throw my hip out. So that's not going to work for me. But, uh, Um, I also knew, New York started to get back to normal, though, when this is when I knew we were round in the corner. So two cab drivers get in a fight just right outside my apartment, right, uh, over a parking spot. So they, they, they clogged up the street. Both cabs are there. They get out of their car. They both have masks on. They start arguing. And then they start fighting, fist fighting. And they put their hands up and they start fighting and they start swinging at each other and they get really close. And then one of them, you could tell in his head, said, ooh, I'm supposed to social distance six feet. <laughs> So he backs up, but he keeps swinging his arm, right? Like, and then he would like run toward the guy, swinging his arm, and then run back. It was like watching two three-year-olds fight. It was like, eh, 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 eh. Was that's so what you funny. needed to TikTok. <laughs> exactly. I'm an idiot. Oh, you should I have done it. I uh, miss all the opportunities. Uh, Paul Macario oh, on the line sure. with me right now. He's going to be in town here this week. Uh, we can find out yes. more information about it at paulmacario.com. I'll have the information at the bottom of the page. Uh, you've also got a podcast. and uh, One, I think it's funny that you've been told uh, by some people that you can't talk about the podcast when you come on a uh, radio station. But yeah. I want to hear about Paul right. McCartney because not everybody – how did you get hooked up with Paul McCartney? Well, first of all, I'm a pretty big deal, okay? <laughs> Why don't you start telling me some respect? What kind you know of who, host are you? Do you know who the f*** I am, B-Sox? <laughs> <laughs> this interview is over. God. I'm find my publicist. Where's my publicist? Um, no, it was like I was, um, this was, I was working, you know, I worked on The Daily Show and wrote, performed on that show and then worked on The Colbert Report. I work on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Yeah. By the way, I just did another performance on the show, which I'm really excited about. People can see it on my website. Sweet. PaulMercurio.com, yeah. And they can go to my website and, and see where I'm, I'm going to be uh, December 16th to 17th. I'm in Des Moines in the area performing, so I'm psyched to be back. So uh, Friday and Saturday, December 16th and 17th, just go to my site, PaulMercurio.com. You can see the where I'm going to perform uh, in Des Moines. You can see the, the Late Show. You can see Nudes. If you want to see Nudes, you can see Daisy with her weak swing theory. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. Anyway. So, Something for uh, everyone. McCartney, he said, yeah, I'm a, I'm a giver. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a... Uh, Paul McCartney was the guest on the Colbert Report, and um, he had just finished rehearsal. Rehearsal, and I, I had to get into the studio. He was, and I round the corner. I went down these stairs. I round the corner, and standing in the hallway, all alone outside the studio, is Paul McCartney, like all alone. No managers, no handler, not a parrot on his shoulder, nothing, which completely freaked me out. Like first you see Paul McCartney, Paul, Paul McCartney, that's one thing. Then you see alone. My whole world slows down. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Paul McCartney, right? And I'm like, should I say hi? Should I not say hi? And then I'm like, you know what? He's alone in a hallway with no security. He's like a gazelle on the Serengeti yeah. Plains. I'm a lion. I'm going to pounce, right? So I go up to him. I go, it's an honor to meet you. I'm so excited to see your performance. And I'm a huge fan. I walk away. That's all I say. And he goes, wait, come back, come back. I'm like, what? What do you want? I'm busy. <laughs> no. He goes, come back. He goes, what's your name? I go, Paul. He goes, oh, Paul, that's a good name. I'm like, I'll do the jokes. Okay, buddy. Yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. my department. You just play a little banjo there and just have, have make everybody happy. I don't even know if he plays a banjo. But anyway. It'd be awesome so, if he did. 
Yeah, he went and pulls it out. <laughs> so he goes, what do you do? I go, well, I'm a stand-up. I work on the show and act and blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, stand-up. Yeah, I love stand-up. And Richard Pryor and starts talking about stand-ups that he knows. And he goes, you got a kid? Yeah, I got a kid. He goes, yeah, it's hard when you're touring with a kid, right? I go, yeah, well, I'm thinking, I think his tour is a little different than my tour. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. got 14 semis. And then he goes, uh, and, but, and so as I'm talking to him, we're just having a normal conversation about life. And I'm talking to him like I'm talking to you. But on the outside, I'm super smooth and hip. I'm like, hey, I'm talking to Paul McCartney. On the inside, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm talking to yeah, Paul McCartney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like out of my mind. Like those girls you see, like the, those, you know, the old footage of Jim screaming at the stadium. Yeah. So then, and as I'm talking to him, I'm getting closer and closer to his face <laughs> because he's iconic. And I'm checking out every nook and cranny again. I'm like, I'm like, God, man, this guy looks amazing. I'm so close now. He's like now leaned against the wall, and he can't get back any farther from me. I'm like the close talker in Seinfeld. I'm yeah, like yeah, that yeah. close to him. I was so close. If I were a chimp, I, you know how they clean fleas off their mates? I could have cleaned ticks off his eyebrows. That's how close I was to him, right? So then I realized, okay, let me leave the guy alone. And I leave, I go into the bathroom, I'm hyperventilating. I call my wife, I'm like, you're not going to believe it. I met Paul McCartney, and then a thought comes to me, Paul McCartney should do my podcast. Like, that's how I think, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so I go, I, 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 I knock on the dressing room door, and I say, look, I know this is crazy, but I'd love to talk to you about how you make music when you do my podcast. He goes, yeah, sure. Just like that. And there's nothing more nerdy to say to some or ask someone to go, will you come on my podcast? I know. And I you're know, asking I Paul know, McCartney. He said, yes, but that's awesome. And then, and that's, but see, that's where it went south because the only way I could describe it is anybody listening, you, anybody, at some point you're like, there was that hot girl, hot guy. You wanted to ask him out. The way above your pig grade, you're like, you know what? I'm going to ask him out anyway. They're going to yeah. say no. I don't have to plan anything. Instead, they say yes, and you don't have a damn plan. That was me because he goes, yeah, sure. How would we do it? And I froze and I'm not making this up to be funny. This is how I sounded. He went, yeah, sure. How are we doing? I went, ah, ah, ah. And I'm like rubbing my leg like Rain Man, like my thigh. And I'm rocking back and forth like I have a mental disorder. Ah. And then I just blurt out, ah, I'll come to London. And he goes, we're in a room in New York together. Why would you come to London? And he goes, okay, this is all true, by the way. He goes, is it easy to do? I go, yeah. He goes, he goes, uh, I, I, and I go, oh, yeah, uh, 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 it's really easy. I don't want to be a bother. I know you're really busy. Um, you know what? You could do it on your phone naked from your toilet. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I saying? Oh, my God, right? Uh, so now I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm screwing this up. I'm like, you know what? Let me leave you alone. I'll go find your assistant. I'll set something up. Thank you so much. He goes, no, wait. He goes, you and I will do it. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you and I need to do it directly set it up directly because they're going to make it too complicated so let's exchange phone numbers no right. yes yes so now i'm handing my phone number on a post-it to paul mccartney and he hands me his and i think okay i just got blown off and he gave me a number to like a chinese restaurant or something right no well anyway he does the show it's amazing. I was working at the Daily Show at the time, too. So I'm rushing. I'm late, and I'm rushing to get to that taping. My phone rings. I don't recognize the number. I let it ring the voicemail. This is the message on my phone. Hey, Paul. It's Paul McCartney here. Um, I'm going to ring you back in five minutes to do the podcast thing. I've got some time now. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of time. So if you're there in five minutes' time, you call me. Okay, bye. Wow. <laughs> did you, the post-it note that he gave his number to you on, did you save it? Please tell me you saved it. Save it. I saved it. I have it framed, and then I have this voice message saved. I have it in about 86 places. I have, <laughs> I have copies of it on my computer, my wife's computer. There's two copies in a capsule in my ass. That's it's awesome. Everywhere. I've saved it. Every, I saved it everywhere. But you and, know what? Uh, you run the risk. What if Paul McCartney would have like started calling you like all like obsessively calling you and stuff? Like at some point you're like, this was a mistake giving Paul McCartney my number. I get the call. Get a restraining order against Paul McCartney. <laughs> I mean, just about, I mean that's a risk. The risk you run because you don't know exactly. You could, you could turn out he could be the psycho. That's exactly right. Yeah. Hey Paul, I, I saw you set a stand up the other night. I was standing in the back of the club dressed as a woman. I didn't want anybody to recognize me. I have a couple of notes on your jokes about rats. 
I'm like, oh my God, we got to, uh, you Paul, know, no we've, joke. We've talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't exactly. come to the shows anymore. <laughs> exactly. I know that you're named Paul and I'm named Paul. That's all we have in common. That's it. It's over. No. He asked me if I wanted to be a Beatle. I'm like, I don't think I can be a Beatle. I think I have to be able to play an instrument to be a Beatle. Like, oh. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, that's on my podcast. It's called Inside Out with Paul Mercurio is the name of the podcast. So, uh, we'll Kevin have the... Costner and No, that's awesome. How was Kevin Costner? He was really great. Again, will not stop calling me. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do with these people. How do I ride a horse? You know, what am I making love to, to a woman? What do I say? Uh, no, he was really nice. We talked, we talked about Yellowstone, uh, you know, the Paramount series. And then yeah. just, he's, a, he's got a band and he's really into music and like a real like artful kind of conversation. Really nice guy. Really good guy. Not That's, a fan of yours. He said he heard the no. show. He said he wouldn't, he wouldn't come. He wanted that you wanted him to come on. I said, you should go on because I can't, the guy just keeps calling me. And, uh, no, he's a really great guy. Actually. He's really cool. I turned, I turned <laughs> um, Paul McCartney into a stalker on this show. So I don't think people. Want yeah. To- that's such a great concept. <laughs> no one has ever said that to me. And, uh, and I never thought about that, but that would be hilarious. By the way, when I retrieved the message, I, I got it. I like, I was in the middle of New York city on the street and I listened to the message. And if you saw me, from afar, you would think I was one of these people that unfortunately had some mental issues and was talking to voices in his head because all you saw was me put the phone to my ear, listen, listen, then put the phone down and go, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> Green, call Paul McCartney, idiot, moron, idiot. And I threw my bag, I threw my phone, like I just completely <laughs> lost it. Oh, oh Paul Macario on the line yeah. with me right now. He's going to be in town. We'll have the details at the bottom of the page. Uh, also, paulmacario.com. You can find the all the interviews, the podcast videos, everything there. Uh, Paul, uh, besides the tour, what else you got going on? You're a busy cat. I become a doctor. Well, uh, I just told yes. myself I'm going to have a license, and so I'm saving lives. Um, you know, every other day or so, I just walk into a hospital and do a little work, and then completely walk out. understand. Um, no, I'm. I'm. Uh, I. We're going to bring back my uh, my Broadway show. I did a show called Permission to Speak. Oh, cool. Which is, uh, yeah, it's kind of based on what I like to do in my stand-up, which is I like to talk to audiences, but not like crowd work or sort of make it fun of them like Rickles or whatever, but like more like tell, just talking, really talking to them and telling them, having them tell stories because they've got amazing stories. And we turned this into a theater show directed by Frank Oz. Frank Oz has created the Muppets with Jim Henson. He's the he's Yoda, the voice of Yoda, the Yoda. Yeah. Um, directed the score, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, Little Shop of Horrors. Like he's and he's the director. And we were doing it on Broadway, and they had to shut it down because of COVID. And we're going to bring it back and bring it on tour. And I get these amazing stories from people. Uh, the, it's a theater show, and the premise is: if we talk, we connect, and if we connect, maybe we realize we have more in common than we think. And if we do, maybe we're not so divisive. It's not a political show. It's just get people, just literally like any like anything from your life. The themes are uh, whatever goes on in people's lives: marriage, relationships, divorce, uh, raising kids. Like I had a woman. I said, "What's your name?" She goes, "Nidia." I go, "Nidia?" Like Lydia? She goes, "No, no, Nidia with an N." I go, "That's a odd name. How'd you get that?" She goes, "Well, my father got my mother pregnant." With but at the same time was having an affair with a woman and he named me after the woman he was having an affair with. <laughs> Whoa. <Right>? Really? <laughs> yes. Damn. That's, I mean? That just seems like that's you that you don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, what kind of, yeah, it's sort of, Hey, you know, it'd be a great name. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's the conversation. You know, it'd be a great name. We've had the conversation a lot. My wife and I, when, you know, our kids were coming around. And it's like, not yeah. once did I ever think, you know what, person that, you know, is an ex or I have any sort of history whatsoever with <laughs> yeah, exactly. is a name that's going to be coming up. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, I, and so, it, and I asked the woman, I go, are your parents still together? She goes, oh, yeah, they're still together. Like, I don't know how, why the wife didn't leave the guy. Like, it, it just was insanity. Oh, and, my God. and so we were getting these stories, like a couple in their 70s. They met online on an S and M website in their seventies. Yeah, and they look like your grandmother and grandfather. It was, oh, like, it was just like, Grandma, can I have some pie and a whip, please, please? You know, a ball gag and some brownies. Like it just like so we so this is something that we're going to bring back and we're going to take it out on tour. 
So and we'll bring it through Des Moines for sure, and uh, and bring and do a special. We're going to do a special for it for television too and TV. So, so that's been the big thing that I've been working on that would bring it back, which I'm really psyched about. Nice. Well, Paul, uh, thanks so much for coming on today. It was great to hear from you again, and uh, we'll get all the information on the website and stuff. Uh, thanks for calling, man. I do appreciate it. I do too. And uh, please just. Don't keep calling me like Paul McCartney does after this, okay? Because it's just going to get really weird. Okay? I want to see one joke in one of your shows about Paul McCartney being a stalker. Like, what the hell did? What, what if? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna because I, I do tell that story sometimes in my show. I'm gonna tag it with that now and see what I come up with. And if it does well, I'll send you ten dollars. What if I that? Promise. What if that's the? That's what puts it over the edge. Paul McCartney, the greatest American uh, comic ever. The Paul McCartney <laughs> oh, joke. God, then, then you're really going to be calling me. Hey, man, I put you on the map. Why don't you call me back? I'm like, oh, God. The, the one hey, you that... got to come to New York. you got to come to New York and see you, come see you late show taping. You I'd do that. Taping. I'd do that in a heartbeat. Yeah. No, what's funny is uh, Moose and I we used to have a joke uh, uh, about, did you get the jar of blood I sent you? You, you got the jar of blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is fun. I had so much fun on that show with you guys. I wish you guys were still together. That was a really fun show. <laughs> yeah, that's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Showbiz is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Trust Paul, me. I tell people who aren't in it. Yeah. Hey, man, this has been great. Best great of luck to you, on. buddy. You. All right.